Hey Valley Middle, uh, today I'm going to go over the uh, item sampler for 6th grade by the state of Minnesota for the MCA, just kind of go over how I arrived at my solutions. Alright, the first problem, which is equivalent to 4 to the 3rd, there's the exponents, basically that means 4 times 4 times 4, and you see how I broke that down into 16 times 4, and then 64. The next one, this is where you're dividing fractions, the first step was making these fractions into improper fractions. You can see I wrote that. The second step is to flip that second fraction. So Ms. Wooten, she used a little statement, K, C, F. Well, it's like KFC, but K, C, F. Keep this one, change this sign, flip this one. So K, C, F. So I flipped that fraction. Now I'm multiplying because I also changed the sign. It becomes 55 60 which reduces down to 11 twelfths. Okay? Problem three. Uh, tricky question if you don't read the very top portion that Riley has 200 stamps. Basically what you're trying to find here is what's 35% of 200 because if you add these up, you get 65%. All right, and then you have 100 minus that is 35%. So what is 35% of 200 I wrote? You could multiply it out like that. Um, I used the box. I was looking for part of 200, which was equal to 35%. So multiply diagonally, divide the other two. Okay, prime factorization. Don't forget, every line will equal 630, each line. Um, broke it down each time, continuing to bring down the 2 because that is prime, 5 is prime, 9 wasn't, so I had to break that down into 3 times 3, and of course 7 was prime. Then don't forget to gather up your exponents because we had a couple of 3, so it becomes 2 times 3 squared times 5 times 7. Now this answer is ridiculous because 9 is not a prime number. This answer is ridiculous because 35 is not a prime number. So really, you only had a couple of choices there that even made sense, okay? All right, uh, this one here, I've gone through this one pretty extensively in class, but the tough part is you just had to, you had to start with something. We know that K is going to be increased by two, but we don't know what K is. So I went and substituted in K being one, and um, I, you know, 7 times 1, then plus 5 is 12. I simplified that. So then I said, well, I'm going to try k plus 2. Well, 1 plus 2 is 3. And then I worked through that. I got 26. So my increase was 14 there. It went from 12 to 26. Then I also tried k plus 2 again. So now I took and added, instead of 3, I added 2 to that. I increased it by 2, and I got 5. Again, I worked through it, just simplifying it, and I got j equal to 40. And again, 40 is 14 larger than that. You can see my increases over here. All right? I know I'm going through it a little quickly, but I've made nice notes on there so you can pause the screen and read them if you want. This one here, uh, keep in mind that the equation has to work for all, all of the um, Coordinates. So I think the toughest part here was knowing that you've got this line here and you need some points. And so you look for the good ones and 2, 1 is a good point. It meets right on there, crosshairs there. And, and then 3, 4 is a good one and 4, 7. And then substitute it in and try each of these. And this is the only one that it works for because if I substitute it in, you know, 3 times 2 is 6 minus 5 gives me 1 because my y value is over here. Sometimes I rewrite it like this. 3x minus 5 equals y. That way I can work a little more easily. So 3 times 3 is 9 minus 5 is 4. So it works for all of my different pairings there. Okay, the next one, this one took me a long time to work through. Be careful. Your first step here, you had to do the parentheses, which is adding up those fractions. And I did that over here, and I lumped, numbered that as number one, how I added up those fractions. Then the next step, 
I had to multiply 4 times 7 eighths. So I did that over there, got 28 eighths. Then the next step, I had to multiply 5 eighths times 2. So here's my 5 eighths times 2 over 1. And I got my 10 eighths. Now finally, I can do my subtraction. I can subtract these two and I get 18 eighths, which I can simplify into 2 and 2 eighths as a mixed number. And of course, 2 eighths can be simplified to 2 and a quarter. And you can see how I even used division down there to convert that improper fraction to a mixed number. Okay, next one, they're just trying to mess with you here. I, I expect a question like this on the test. Here they're showing this rhombus, and we need to find the dif different angles. Well, we know that there are 360 in all quadrilaterals, and the rhombus, you know, if this is uh, 75 degrees, then of course the opposite one will be 75 degrees. So now I, these two together are 150, so I took 360 and I subtracted the 150 and I had 210. Then I took 210 and divided by these two angles and I found out that it's 105. Okay? The other reason I drew this picture down here for is because really what you have here are two intersecting lines, even though they, these are rhombuses. You have two intersecting lines, and we know that the vertical angles or the opposite angles will be equal there. So if these two are 75, this angle here is going to have to be 105 because these two angles together here are adjacent angles, and that will equal 180 degrees. I'll draw it over here. So this one would have to be 100. 105 because these two together make a straight line at 180. So just keep in mind, whenever two lines intersect like that, the sum of the angles there will be 360 degrees too. Opposite angles will be equal. Adjacent angles are going to add up to be 180 degrees. So here's an obtuse angle plus this little acute angle will equal 180. Um, which statement is true? tricky. Um, a lot of kids believe A is the correct answer, but uh, 1 sixth is 1.666 or 1.6 repeating. That is not equal to 1.6 because this is like 16 cents, and here's 16 cents, but we have some extra change there. You know, we have 6 tenths of a cent, so that doesn't work. Correct answer, this is 0.33, this is like 33 cents. And 0.3 is just like 30 cents. Again, I'm constantly trying to relate decimals to money. Those first couple places will help me solve a lot of problems. Okay, here, um, this is kind of a unit rate problem. We've got Kelly up here who can do, um, she does uh, 12 candles in three hours. So, you know, if you figure out 12 divided by three, she's making four per hour. And we know that Lee makes six per hour. They said that. So, Kelly would do. 12 candles in 3 hours, and I showed you my 4 candles per hour, and Lee, we already know, so Kelly, she's doing four, time, 4 candles times 8 hours, that's 32 candles, Lee does 6 candles times 8 hours, that's 48 candles, so if you subtract Lee from Kelly, 48 minus 32, you get a difference, and that's what we're looking for here, that difference uh, is 16. This one here, number 11, is a unit rate. Uh, kids don't know where to go with this. When that happens, think of something simple. How about if this kid paid $2 for two candy bars? You divide, correct? But instead, the bottle of soap costs $3.40 for 64 ounces. Just divide it out. Here's the number you get in your calculator. You need to round to the nearest hundredth because that's what money is. So we have 0 0.05, and we look next door, there's not enough there for us to bump that up to six cents or to round that up. So, you know, our correct answer is five cents. All righty. This one here, a company printing 250 calendars. Uh, in one hour, 75 calendars are made. Um, I just use the box here because we're trying to find out what percent of the calendars are printed in one hour. So we know that 75 calendars out of 250 are printed, and we know that's going to be equivalent to some percentage out of 100. Multiply diagonally, divide the other two, 30%. Okay? Uh, this next one, the surface area of a cube is 384 square inches. 
um, what is the volume of the cube? I want you to think about the Rubik's Cube and think about a cube and the fact that all the sides on that Rubik's Cube are the same and that's going to be the same for any cube. So 384 divided by 6 equal faces would be 64. So there would be 64 square inches on each of these faces of the cube plus the ones you can't see. So the surface area is 64 on each side. The sides must be square because it's a cube. I mean, both measurements of each face are going to have to be the same. So basically, what, to, what number multiplied by itself will equal 64? Well, of course, that's 8. So we know now that all the sides are going, of the cube will be 8. 8 here, 8 on the height, and 8 on the depth. So if you take 8 times 8 times 8, you get 512. Uh, next one here. This heart is uh, cut from a gridded piece of or uh, is cut from a gridded piece of paper. What is the approximate area of the heart? Um, what I did here was I just did half of the heart, and I got 22 holes, and then I had 11 half ones. You can see my little ticks. So I called 11 and a half. I just call that you know about five. Um, so I had 22 plus five is 27. 27 times 2, I had about 54 square units, and um, the closest answer to that was 50. All right? So again, you can see all my little half ones, but some of them were kind of tiny, so instead of 6, I just called it 5. Um, all right, Jolene bought 12 apples. Each one weighed 1.8 ounces. How many pounds? Well, you've got the one point. 8 ounces times the 12 gave you 21.6 and here's that answer over here they want you to choose that but you have to remember that you have to divide the ounces by 16 ounces per pound to get that 1.35 pound answer which is the correct answer A okay so I'm here um, this one here we didn't really uh, you didn't have to do a gridded response type of question here, so I'll just take you through it. Just remember that, you know, if you were to take and roll a die, you would have six outcomes. You could have a one, a two, a three, a four, or a five, or a six. But for each of those, if you were to spin a spinner, you could either have A, B, or C. So you would have a total of 18. So you've got six possible, sorry, my phone's buzzing there. You'd have six possible outcomes for the die, and then if you make a little tree diagram, you'd have a 1, and you could have an A, a B, or a C. Three different outcomes for each of those. So you end up with 6 times 3, which is 18. Okay, so then, again, I'm constantly drawing pictures to help me make sure my thinking is correct. Uh, here's the question on relative frequency. We know that um, it, the relative frequency of somebody is going to be 3 fifths. So I just started taking looking at all the tails. Well, this kid had 19 tails out of 50. This kid had 35 tails out of 50. This one had 29 out of 50. And this one had 30 out of 50. Well, this looked the closest to 3 fifths. So if I divided both of those guys by 10 by chopping off that 0, I get 3 fifths. And of course, that is Tyrone here, D. Okay? Uh, which is equivalent to 0.04% tricky question. Um, this is a calculator one, but uh, remember you got 0 .04 here is where I started and to go from a percent to a decimal we're going to we're going to divide, we're going to move that two spaces to the left so we really end up with four ten thousandths um, which of course can be reduced to one um, one over two hundred or two thousand five hundred Okay, that's a tricky one. Make sure you understand that. But you see, you can see what I was doing here. I had 10%. And you know, I'm like, because I started with something I knew. Well, I know if I had 10%, I'd move it two spaces here to get 0.1 or 0.10 as my decimal. Um, and um, so I had to do the same thing here. If you got 0 0.04, again, I have to move it a couple places over and then put the placeholders in. All right. Um, what is the greatest common factor between 48 and 64? Uh, I just started with uh, 48. 
I factored it and I worked backwards. And I asked myself, does 48 go into 64? No. Does 24 go into 64? No. Does 16 go into 64? Yes. So that'll be the greatest common factor. If you wanted to, you could have factored them both and compared. I like starting with the smaller one because there's no way that 64 will go into 48. So I factor the smaller one and work backwards. Uh, the next one, this is a box question too. You've got four drops of uh, red and five drops of blue paint for each gallon. So I set up a little box here and I've got drops and I've got uh, gallons. So I had nine drops are in five gallons and 45 drops are in we're not sure how many gallons. So I converted, uh, or I just took in Pop that in, I multiplied diagonally, divided, and I got 25. All right? You could have divided that out, and that's what I did over here. I figured out that's 1.8 drops per gallon, um, and you could do it that way too. But again, strong beat the force within the box. All right? But make sure you, make sure you line things up. I've got drops on top, gallons in the bottom, because these the fractions or the ratios, depending upon how you want to look at that, have to be the same. Okay, the next one. A phone company uses this equation. Well, this is really confusing to begin with. Until I got down to the bottom here and I saw that the monthly charge is 77.50. Well, so then I could substitute that in for the Y. So I had 77.50 equals some um, 0.15 or like 15 cents, 0.15x plus 10. Well, then I saw that as a, you know, two-step equation. So I subtracted 10. I got 67.50 equals 0.15x. And then I divided by 0.15, both sides. Those crossed off. I've isolated my x. 67.50 divided by 0.15 is 450. And that answer makes sense. I just kind of was checking it up here. So I have 450 texts times 0.15 plus ten dollars would give me that seventy-seven fifty. Uh, here we've got this kite drawing. Uh, they need to find the, uh, it's got the scale drawing, we need to find the area of the kite. Um, well, uh, we don't really know how to find the area of the kite, but we can find these four triangles here. Here's one triangle, we can find that. We can find the area of that. Six times ten would be sixty for the entire area, or 30 for this triangle and 30 for this triangle, so it's really 30. And if you work through that, you would have 30 here and 30 here. Now you also have this triangle as well, which is 6 times 6. So you'd have 36 for the entire square, and half of that would be 18 here, and you'd have 18 over in this one. So we know that it's just 18, but you're going to have 18 in the bottom too. So we have the 30, and you have the 30, and the 18, and the 18, you have a total of 96 centimeters squared. You also could have found the area of this larger triangle here, the top triangle, and then just doubled it because it's symmetrical. All right. Find the missing angle. This one is pretty easy. Hopefully nobody will miss this one. Uh, just take 180 and subtract the 93, subtract the 45, and you've got your 42 degrees there. Um, this one here um, had more problem, more questions on it than any question on the item sampler. A building has nine windows. Each window is five feet. Everybody wants to write five in all these boxes. Well, really what they're saying is the height of this window is five, the height of this window is five, and the height of this window is five. So what I did is I said, okay, you've got five here, five, and five. But what about this space above the window? Well, it's a little less than five, so I called it four. And I call this space 4, and this space 4, and this space 4. And I looked at the doors, and I kind of divided them in half, and I thought, you know what? They're smaller than a window when you get cut in half, so it looks like about the same as this space. So I called those both 4, too. So now you've got 9, 9, 9 when you add up those. Plus you have 4 and 8. Here is 12. So you've got 27 if you add the 3 9s, and 12 is 39 closest answer on that is 40, so that was my estimate. People miss this word about. They're trying to figure out how to, to do that. Most common answer is 15, which doesn't make a lot of sense. If you say, hey, this building is 15 feet tall, 
that's the that's the height of the windows. We need we need the the space in between the windows and the door uh, up and up from the ground floor down here as well. All right, last one. Tyler has a stack of cards. He picks a card. By the way, I hate this question. I I, I think it's poor. Uh, he picks a card and records the color and returns the card to the stack. He repeats it 60 times, choosing a red card 24 times. So he drew 60 cards and he drew 24 red. Well, we know that 24 over 60 is really means 24 divided by 60, that fraction. So if I do that, I get a 0.4, which is the correct answer. So that is the probability expressed as a decimal. All right. Thank you very much for listening. Hope this helped. Have a good day.